Well, Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez just got destroyed in regional and local elections in Spain. And that in political world means it's time for a new promotion, a new job. And it looks like NATO has its eyes on Pedro Sanchez, possibly for a job promotion. Uh, Redacted correspondent Dan Cohen has this story. Dan, so a job promotion after you lose all of these elections? Yeah, I'm going to take the next uh, couple weeks off and then and then see if I can just take your spot, Clayton. That's right. Uh, that's, that's how it works. Apparently, that's, that's, that's what's going on here in, uh, in NATO. So NATO has reportedly already selected the prime minister of Spain, Pedro Sanchez, to replace Jens Stoltenberg as the next secretary general of NATO. So here's a headline from the Spanish newspaper, El Público, saying as much. But NATO is, according to the reports, waiting to choose its next secretary general until after Spain's general election, which is just a few months away. Spain just held regional and local elections that resulted in a dramatic victory for right-wing parties and crushing losses for the ruling center-left parties, including that of Sanchez. Now, right now, Spain is governed by a left-wing coalition of the Socialist Workers' Party of Spain, the, the PSOE, which Pedro Sanchez heads, and Unidas Podemos, the Together We Can party. Now, this map shows the results of the recent election. The blue represents the center-right popular party. The red represents Sanchez, Sanchez's PSOE party. And the popular party won in seven of the 12 regions, including some of those that had previously supported the PSOE. But there actually may be no bigger winner than the Vox Party, which the Popular Party will almost certainly have to form a coalition with. Vox is an ultranationalist party that praises the Franco dictatorship that allied with Nazi Germany and ruled until 1975. And it's not exactly aligned with the Eurosceptic parties across Europe, but it does have some similarities. The biggest loser from these elections is the Unidas Podemos Party, uh, which was formed out of Spain's version of the Occupy movement. Um, so it's so overall, it's a huge victory for the right wing and a big loss for the left wing in Spain. And it seems like this is a rebuke of these positions of supporting. I mean, it's it's amazing, right? On the one hand, you you're you're supporting NATO, you're supporting the this sort of globalist agenda, and you lose the elections locally in your country. But then NATO steps in and says, we're going to swoop you up as a potential new employee because of your loyalty to this globalist cause. Right. I mean, it's 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 ridiculous. The locals in Spain rejected this movement and yet he's getting promoted. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Pedro, not only Pedro Sanchez, but basically the entire Spanish political spectrum, all of the parties that have any bit of power, including the right wing parties that just won, are actually totally in bed with NATO. So here's here's Pedro Sanchez with Ukrainian president Volodymyr Zelensky. And here's the parliament giving a standing ovation to Zelensky, just like they did here in uh, in Washington. There was only one deputy from Podemos who did not applaud, though did still stand up. But overall, you can see how tight all the parties from the Spanish uh, uh, political arena are all pro-NATO, neoliberals, globalists, call them what you will. And this isn't only in Spain. Remember what happened with the Finnish prime minister, Sana Marin, mm -hmm. the, uh, the World Economic Forum young leader? Well, she was real tight with Zelensky, went to Brussels, went to, she went to Kiev, and now she's out. She lost her election. You have the German Social Democratic Party. They met, they met with Zelensky and lost big in, in local elections earlier this year. So Zelensky kind of exemplifies the whole imperial machine, and he is giving the kiss of death to these political parties. But again, the in Spain, the right-wing parties, the popular party, which supported uh, and sent Spanish troops to Iraq for George Bush, they are pro-NATO and pro-Ukraine, and so is Vox, the, the far-right the far -right party, the ultra-nationalist party. They're also pro-NATO. So I think they kind of function as the opposable thumb of the Atlanticist globalist system, 
And again, there's just no alternative in Spain. Um, Pedro Sanchez, the current prime minister, who's you know may end up be becoming the head of NATO, he just called for snap elections. Apparently, he's hoping to scare the Spanish public into voting for his party again. It actually worked in 2019 when Vox kind of really emerged onto the scene. And it's the same strategy that Democrats in the U.S. use. You, know, you have to vote Democrat to stop fascism and, and the evil Trump. But I don't know how many, how many times that's going to work when there's no real fundamental difference in the economics and the political uh, programs of of these parties, there are some there are some aesthetic differences, but but fundamentally not so different. Um, so, if Sanchez and his party fail again in these snap elections or the upcoming general election, looks like he's like you said going to get kicked upstairs to a, a nice position as the head of NATO. Do we know what the margin of loss is for him? I mean, it, is it pretty substantial? across the country this the the amount of spanish that the amount of spanish people are saying you know we're, we're done with this we don't want to be a part of this globalist uh, ideology we don't want to be a part of this globalist agenda is it overwhelming or is it by a squeaky squeaky margin i think the i don't know exactly what the what the the numbers are in terms of margins how comfortably the the right-wing parties won but I mean, the key thing is there are, there are a handful, I think three regions that have long been kind of strongholds of, of Sanchez's party, of the PSOA, um, and those went to the Partido Popular, mm -hmm. and there's also uh, the, this kind of center-right party, and then there's also a huge uh, uh, swell of support for Vox. So even if people uh, you know, end up getting to, going back to, back to the other party that's just as pro-NATO, there's obvious discontent with the 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 party that has promised so much and has uh, uh, and has really you know done nothing. I mean, I would say less than done nothing has actually uh, gone along with the entire U.S. NATO agenda. Um, has cut itself off from not only uh, Russian gas but also from um, gas in Algeria, where mm -hmm. uh, it it gets quite a bit of it. So because Algeria is you know, pro Russia. So, um, so Spain, the, the political leadership has really just put average people, the masses in an incredibly terrible position with, of course, inflation and, and everything else. Well, and we're seeing this rebuke coming from the likes of Italy, right? The, when, in that most recent election, um, one can only, we see the protests every day on the streets of, of Paris um, and across France, not just, of course, for uh, pension and retirement age, but also anti-NATO protests. We're seeing it in Germany as well. Of course, this doesn't get any media coverage, but now Germany is now officially in a recession. As of last week, re Germany is in a recession um, and uh, consumers can't afford anything. They can't afford to to buy to go out to dinner. Um, that was specifically why Germany went into a recession on consumer spending. They're just they don't have the money, um, and so you're seeing what has happened to Europe uh, at large. And you're seeing uh, it's not just Italy, it's not just Germany, it's Europe wide. Uh, these sanctions against Russia, this uh, this kowtowing to the United States and NATO, uh, and one wonders if we're starting to see a real change in NATO uh, in Europe. Um, this awareness that, hey, we should not be under the boot of the United States any longer. Yeah, I think there's there's definitely more questioning um, when we when we look at uh, the, you know, the case of someone like Ruben Hisbert, who we who we interviewed here, redacted a month ago, who's being prosecuted. He's, he's there are charges against him for uh, for for raising questions about. Um, what the the U.S. Uh, uh, what what Spain's relationship to the U.S. and to Brussels is, um, and there's clearly more and more skepticism. But in my mind, the question is: Will that sort of uh, uh, crystallize? Will that become a political party, a political faction, or will that just stay in the margins? But either way, Pedro Sanchez, uh, I guess you know he's he's going to do really well, no matter what. <laughs> He'll, he'll be elevated to. I wonder how I'm just we'll get you out of here on this, Dan, which is, you know, Jen Stoltenberg, of course, has moved to expand NATO, been actively uh, been actively involved in the expansion of NATO into Finland, et cetera. Um, and of course, uh, over the past few days, Ukraine has moved to want to fast track their membership into NATO. Um, it'll be really interesting to see. Obviously, 
As you mentioned, they welcomed Zelensky into their parliament, in the Spanish parliament. Will this be an open door, sort of a, an accelerated process for Ukraine to become part of NATO? It'll be interesting to see how he, if he gets this job, how he would lead NATO. What, what might change in the NATO hemisphere? Any sort of speculation as to how NATO might be different under his leadership? I mean, I think he's more of a, a yes man kind of figure. Uh, I mean, he's gone along with, with everything that the U.S. has wanted. He's even couched his latest statements as, um, you know, we want, we want, uh, uh, you don't want a, a Bolsonaro type figure uh, to to be able to to be with Biden or a Trump figure. So he's primarily concerned about Spain's relationship with the United States and maintaining that kind of ironclad relationship with Washington. And obviously, that's what he and the elites that surround him. Uh, benefit from. So um, I think he's just going to be taking orders, uh, taking orders from Washington and and the 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 course of NATO expanding eastward, uh, threatening World War Three, putting us on the brink of nuclear annihilation and human extinction is just going to go on. And and Pedro Sanchez, if he ends up as the uh, as the secretary general of NATO, will be just a figurehead. Hmm. Fascinating. Fascinating. Jen Stoltenberg out, possibly Pedro Sanchez in. Dan Cohen from Washington, thank you so much for this story. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.